Hi, it's Mr. Polachek, and today we're in the classroom to go through the diffusion through a membrane lab. And the best way to start is to go through some of the materials. So, in here we have a solution of starch and glucose. It's dissolved in this solution. And to understand the lab really well, you have to know about starch and glucose and what they really are. Starch is a complex carbohydrate. If you look up here, you can see that it's a big molecule. It's made up of a string of glucoses, all chemically combined, and it's a storage sugar for plants. So it's a big molecule, and it's not going to pass through that membrane. Um, on the other hand, glucose, which is also dissolved in here, if you look here, is a small molecule, and that will be able to pass through that permeable membrane depending upon concentration. And that's what this lab is about. It's about how the particles diffuse, which ones will diffuse, which ones will not diffuse and why that happens. So in here, you have starch and glucose dissolved in this liquid, okay? Um, the other thing that we're gonna need is a permeable membrane. So I have here some dialysis tubing. Now, uh, this dialysis tubing will allow small molecules through, um, just like a cell membrane would, uh, but not the large ones. Now, how is it different than a living cell's membrane? Well, a living cell's membrane is selectively permeable. That means if the molecules are small enough but they have a charge or have some other property about them, they might not be um, allowed in and they might have to travel into that cell another way, maybe through some proteins. Uh, but this is just a um, piece of dialysis tubing that can't really select. It's permeable, it'll let the small stuff move, but not the big stuff. So I have over here some of that dialysis tubing so in water and it's going to allow me to prepare this to store that starch and glucose solution so the best way to prepare this is to take one end and just kind of twist it really good and then tie it into a knot you can use string but i found this is a little bit easier it's quicker and it, it definitely works okay so you have one end tied now take your fingers rub them together on the other side it will open up the top and what you can do is use a funnel, use a funnel, insert it into the dialysis tubing, and you can pour, very slowly pour the starch glucose solution in here, retie the top, and rinse that baggie off because you don't want any starch or glucose on the outside of this bag. You wanna make sure that the only starch and the only glucose is found inside that bag, and I'll show you what to do uh, next. So let's set that bag up. Okay, so this is what you have set up now, and this bag has been rinsed. So in this dialysis tubing, um, you have the starch and glucose solution. I've left some room. Try to leave some room in the bag if you're going to try to do this yourself. Um, and it's set up, it's tied, it doesn't look like it's leaking, and we're ready to go. Now, before I run this experiment, I wanna show you how you would test for the presence of uh, starch and glucose. What I have here are these glucose test strips, and you can see it's got a blue uh, pad to it, and I have an indicator key here. So this, if there's glucose present in a solution, this is gonna change a series of colors to let you know how much sugar there is. And this is the uh, container that we started with, with the uh, starch and the glucose in it. So what I'll do is I'll just dip this in real quick, and it's gonna take a few minutes uh, for it to change if there is sugar present. So I will leave that here, but I also wanna show you uh, that there's starch in here. So I'm gonna take this clean test tube, I'm gonna pour some starch glucose solution in here and introduce our next material that we're gonna be using for the lab and it's starch indicator. Now this is iodine, I have it in a dropper bottle here and it starts off rusty brown and um, when you add this to water, here's a beaker of water, it will stay that rusty brown because the rusty brown um, or amber colored solution um, is what the indicator looks like normally. It will change color if starch is present. So here you can see it's got that amber color because there's no starch, this is distilled water. This was our starch glucose solution and I'm going to add the starch indicator to this test tube and watch the difference because there is starch in here. You can see it turns this black color. 
Okay, so that's how you use starch indicator or iodine to test for the presence of starch. Okay, now if we go back and look at our glucose strip, look at how that has changed. Okay, this is what it looked like originally. I don't know if you guys can see that. It started off that light blue. I dipped it in the solution and left it for a minute, and now it's the dark brown, which means that there is glucose present. So I have confirmed that in this container there is starch and there is glucose. So what do we do now? I'm going to take my dialysis fake cell, my artificial cell here, and I'm going to lower it into my beaker that contains water and glucose, uh, I'm sorry, starch indicator. So let me just add a little bit more. It's not gonna change a different color. It just makes it a little bit darker. And I'm gonna lower it in here and we'll take a look at a time-lapse uh, video to see how this changes. Okay, so let's see what happened. When we pull the dialysis tubing out of the beaker of starch indicator, we can see that it has turned this bluish black. And don't forget why that happened. We had indicator. Indicator is small, it's iodine. It was able to diffuse into this bag. It detected the starch and it turned, it turned this black, this bluish black. Um, notice, however, that the beaker that it was in that did not turn blue black. The reason is because the starch could not come out of this bag. The starch is trapped in this bag. The indicator can move through and it goes from where there's a lot to where there was little. We had no iodine, no starch indicator in this bag. So it moved from where there's a lot to where there's a little. It moved into this bag. It hit the starch. It turns blue black. But the starch couldn't go out because remember the starch is too big. Okay, so what about the glucose? The glucose was mixed with the starch in the solution and placed in this bag. We lowered the bag into the beaker that contained iodine and water. So there's a high concentration of glucose in the bag. There was no glucose in the beaker. It's gonna to wanna to reach equilibrium. So some of the glucose is gonna move from the dialysis tubing into this container, but we don't see a color change. And the reason why we don't see a color change is because iodine is a starch indicator. It only tests for the presence of starch. What we have to do is go back. If you remember, we used our indicator strip. So what I will do is I will dip this in here and I will lay it next to our indicator chart and I will wait a minute and see what happens. All right, so here we are a minute later and you can see that it has changed, okay? There is glucose. Glucose moved from this dialysis tubing into the container here and it's going from high concentration to low. Now, let's look at the uh, board behind me and talk about what's really happening. How can we represent this with symbols and with letters? Uh, if you look here, we have a beaker and this is our initial setup. We have our dialysis tubing uh, in the beaker, we have in that dialysis tubing, we have S for starch and G for glucose. Notice the number of S's that I put and the number of G's that I put, because that's gonna be important in a minute. Now, outside the beaker, we're gonna put letter I. That I could represent indicator, it could also represent iodine. What do we know about these particles? The S for starch is a big molecule. The G for glucose is a small, simple sugar monosaccharide. It's a small molecule. And the I is also a small molecule. So this was our initial setup. What happens after we watch that time-lapse video? What happens? Well, the I's go from high concentration to low. So they move into the bag. The starch can't move out. So they react. The bag turns blue-black. The G for glucose, it goes from high concentration to low concentration, so it moves out of the bag. And we tested for it, uh, and we saw that positive result in that the glucose did move out. And that's the diffusion through a membrane lab. I hope that that helped. And uh, if you want to see another video about diffusion and osmosis, I'm going to be uh, putting another one out there uh, about looking at osmosis and changes in a potato core. So look for that. Uh, it'll go over things like hypertonic solutions, hypotonic, isotonic, 
and I uh, hope that helped. Okay, bye. Okay, you guys, so if you want to see another video on plasmolysis, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions, just click right here. If you want to see a more advanced lab where we look at the effect of molarity on a potato core, you can click right there. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can click right here.